We actually had a storm today, but this is not my footage. It's from Dan Ludeman, skilled cinematographer, licensed these shots to ArtGrid. But I happen to know that he used the same camera system on this event as I am using every day. So I find it somewhat suitable for this video. This is not a typical review of a certain camera. It's about stuff I bought in my first year as a full-time freelancer. Stuff I mostly love and use every day. But there are some lessons learned looking back. I will be as honest as I can about my own experiences, pointing them out as we go. But spoiler alert, at the end of the day, I really love this setup. Many discussions of this type start with the camera itself. But if I were to do it all again, I would probably focus on something totally different first, instead of last. Lighting. Both gear and knowledge, before buying better and better cameras. Without doubt, lighting is what has the biggest effect on your images. If you know how to handle the lights, you will be able to produce beautiful video with almost any camera. So much improvement to the image is done before you even press record. This is from a training session I had with a couple of videographer friends, where we tried different techniques. And I say this as a reminder to myself, keep practicing lighting. The next important thing, according to me, is actually the lenses. Quality lenses is really good investment, and if you take good care of them, they will stay with you when you upgrade your camera and other accessories. This is a Sigma CineZoom 18 to 35 mm T2, the one lens I use the most. I was asked why I didn't choose the Fujinon MK18-55 T2.9 instead, and that's a really good question. I actually researched them both very intensely before my purchase, theoretically. Where I live, I simply don't have any high-end camera shops nearby where I could try them out or make a proper comparison. I was also asked why I choose the much more expensive Cine version over the stills version of this lens. And my answer to that is, at the very time I had a really big project coming up, where I would do a travel documentary in some rough and challenging places. And it seemed better to go with the heavy duty version, but that project was cancelled in the last minute. And as most new video cameras seem to be full frame nowadays, some could argue this was a mistake to invest so much money in a Super 35 lens. But it's still a very good lens and I absolutely love it. Another useful and much cheaper lens in my collection is a pre-owned Canon 70-200 f4 with a Metabones adapter to my Sony camera. I could easily get stuck here and talk about lenses all day, but let's move on to the camera body. The Sony FS5 Mark II. It has a lot of great qualities and features and is also a great value for the money spent. Most importantly, it has everything I need at this point of my career, but also leaves some room for me to improve and learn as a cinematographer. The variable ND filter is at the top of the list among two reliable XLR ports for audio and a SDI output for external recording or good quality live streaming. The camera records beautiful 10-bit HD video or 4K 8-bit internally on affordable SD cards. 
but with an external recorder like this Atomos Shogun 7 I can go as high as 12 bit ProRes RAW which is insane for a camera in this price range. The monitor also gives me a lot of extra features like exposing with false colors and preview lookup tables. And the bonus feature is also that I can use the Shogun 7 as a switcher in a multiple camera live stream. By now the camera rig is pretty big and heavy, but this is of course optional. When I want to be more lightweight I leave the Atmos in the case. For sound I most often use the Rode NTG5 as a shotgun microphone and the wireless Sennheiser Lav AVX ME2, sorry not visible in this footage, neither is the Sony MDR7506 headphones, oh sorry a lot of details now, good audio is vital in video and I'm very happy with this setup. I also built me a shoulder rig up and played around with a custom top handle a follow focus but I have to be very honest here, this is not what I need on a regular basis, not for my style of shooting. For me it's more of nice to have than need to have. Speaking of nice to have, a Polar Pro matte box. That's another common question, why I decided to put this on. And I totally understand the question, while we're being totally honest here, it's just to make this rig look cool and cinematic. Or at least 90% looks and 10% practical. It makes the camera system look more professional. Some may find that stupid or silly the same way people add things to their cars, their phones or whatever. It's okay to have different opinions on everything, and especially this one. To sum things up, this is a very versatile camera system and I can easily scale it up or down depending on my needs for the day. Maybe I'm too hard on myself looking back in this video, how I seemingly rushed into buying certain stuff, but once again, as long as you have the basics, you're good to go. The rest is details, sometimes unnecessary details. But as long as I learn, there is progress. And there is much to learn when you are a filmmaker. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos in the near future and welcome back to my channel on YouTube.